Let's talk about some safety features of this drone. And one of them, which is very important you understand, is called Return to Home, RTH. And uh, Return to Home basically brings the aircraft safely back home in case something happens. And that's going to use the last recorded home point. Now, what is a home point? Home point is what the GPS records as the place where it took off from, or if you update it while you're flying, then whatever that new spot is going to be. And you can actually do that in flight. The one thing that I have not seen, if you've flown DJI product in the past, in some cases you can ask it to go back to the controller uh, as the home point. So if the controller actually moves and you want to get that as the, the home point, you actually can do that in, the, uh, in this drone. So you're going to be stuck with the spot that you took off from or from the spot that you updated while you were up in the air, but nothing in between. So if you fly from a boat then, and you click the return to home button, then this is going to go back to wherever you were and then uh, it could land in the water. So be careful with that. There's three different types of RTH. We have smart RTH, we have low battery RTH, and we have a fail safe RTH. And they all work differently. So let me go ahead and show you kind of different scenarios of how that works. And it's actually fairly complex. So uh, you really need to understand how that works based on what's in the manual. But first let's talk about the home point. The home point is the first location that the aircraft received the signal from when it has four bars or more. And you can see on the top right here, uh, we, we can see our satellite signal if we have four bars or more and then there's going to be a signal from a, there's going to be a female voice that tells you um, The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. It says that a ton so you'll hear that and then uh, the indicator in the back of the quadcopter is going to turn green. That's when we know that we have a home point blinking green in the back. Let's talk about the different modes. The first one is the smart RTH. Smart RTH because you'd be smart to push on that button if you get in trouble, okay? This is gonna be initiated by you, the user, when you either push on the home button on the controller or if you're on your uh, app, then there's the button right here. You're gonna hold that RTH yeah. button and then eventually it's gonna go into a circle and then it's gonna come back and fly back, okay? Now when that happens, when you do the smart RTH, there's two different modes that are going to kick in. We can have a straight line RTH or we can have a power saving RTH. I know it gets confusing, uh, but let's take a look at how they work. The straight line RTH is going to use the return to home altitude that you set in the settings. To do this, you're going to go to settings, safety, and then auto RTH altitude, auto RTH altitude. The minimum is 49.2 feet and the maximum is 1640 feet. Don't use anything higher than 400 feet. Don't use anything higher than 400 feet, okay? Because otherwise you could be busting airspace. So be careful with that. So um, I tested it for all different types of altitude. It works, but everything is based on the return to your home altitude. So let's take a look at a few scenarios. Straight line RTH. We push the button right here and then the drone is going to come back. So let's take a look at this example. We have a straight line RTH. We have set up our uh, return to home altitude to a certain altitude and then the aircraft is further away from us than 65 feet so the d the distance here is more than 65 feet and the aircraft is located at a lower altitude than rth let's say you set up your rth to be 200 feet and you're flying at 100 feet okay and what's going to happen is then we have the drone is going to climb up to your return to home altitude 200 feet and it's going to start coming back to be right on top of your landing point, your home point, and then it's going to come down and land by itself. Okay, that's if you're further away than 65 feet and if you are below RTH altitude. If you are above RTH altitude, you set up your RTH altitude as 200 feet and you're flying at 250 feet, then what the drone is going to do is actually going to stay at 250 feet. It's not going to descend. It's going to stay at 250 feet and it's going to come back and do the same thing. Fly on top of you and then it's going to come back down and land. Okay? The next thing is 
Straight line RTH. Now, instead of being more than 65 feet, you are between 65 feet and 16 feet from the controller. I know these numbers are converted from um, metric system, uh, which is what DJI set, so that's why they're kind of funky, but it's between 16 feet and 65 feet. What's gonna happen is that the drone is going to return at the altitude at which it's at, regardless of what the return to home altitude is. So the idea is you're pretty close, okay, less than 65 feet, you're pretty close, you can have the drone inside right here. If you hit that button, it's just gonna come back right at that altitude and then land, so, and then go down. If you are within 16 feet of the drone, and you push that button, it's just gonna go down and land. It's not gonna come back to where you start from, it's just gonna go down and land. 16 feet is not much. Uh, I don't know what the reasoning is behind this, quite frankly, but just push that button and it's just gonna land right there. There is an option in here. This was straight line RTH when we push the button. There's an option that if the drone is actually pretty far out and uh, we push that button and then it, the, the drone thinks that it's too far out that it won't make it, then it's gonna go into the power saving RTH, which is different than the low battery RTH, okay? So if the distance is too far and the altitude is too high, then basically what's gonna happen is that the drone is going to come back at an angle, and that's if you're further than 65 feet, again, and you are lower than RTH, then the drone is gonna climb to RTH and then it's gonna come back and then eventually it's gonna kinda of cut the corner here and start to descend and then get right on top of you and then it's gonna come back down, okay? So that's power RTH more than 65 feet away. Otherwise, if you click any of uh, power, uh, uh, power RTH, low power RTH doesn't kick in if you're too close to the drone. It's only if you're pretty far out. The next type of RTH that we have is low battery RTH. And this is triggered when the battery becomes low. It happens to everyone. You're flying around, you get this warning, your battery is low. And then there's gonna be a warning that pops up on your screen and it says that it's gonna to start to return to home. And it does that after 10 seconds. If you don't touch anything on the controller, after 10 seconds, it's gonna come back. Now this can be canceled. You can actually cancel that anytime by pushing the uh, RTH button, the pause, bu pause button, or by actually moving any of the sticks. If you cancel that and decide to fly back, uh, which, which is fine, you can actually definitely do that. But eventually if the battery is really too low that the drone won't be able to stay up in the air, then the drone is gonna go into auto land function. And I did this, I tried it, I went pretty far out, I knew the battery was, not pretty far out, I went far enough that uh, I knew the drone was gonna go down and I could recover it. But what happens is that the drone just starts to go down. You can climb, you can descend, but you can actually, well, you can descend quicker, but you can't, uh, you can actually control the aircraft left and right and, uh, and forward and back. So you can still control the airplane, but it's just gonna descend, 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 descend very slowly like this. So make sure that when that happens, you can go and recover the drone. There's not much you can do, but uh, if you went too far, and the wind was pretty bad, and you're coming back and you're fighting the wind, and then you get this uh, low battery RTH, and then the, the drone keeps coming back, coming back, coming back, but it can't do it, then it's gonna slowly start descending. If you went over water, your drone is gonna land in the water. It's happened to a lot of people before. So be careful, keep that in mind when you do this, okay? But you can still control the drone even if it auto lands. And then we have what's called a fail safe RTH. In this case, if there was a home point recorded, the failsafe RTH is going to activate when there is no signal for more than 11 seconds. Let's say you went behind an object, a large object, and for 11 seconds, that object prevented the controller from receiving the signal. For more than 11 seconds, then the drone is gonna go into failsafe RTH. If that's the case, what the drone is gonna do is the drone is actually gonna move back 50 feet and then it's gonna do a whole bunch of stuff. So let's take a look at this example. The idea is the fact that we're flying around and then all of a sudden we have a failsafe RTH, there is no signal. We are further than 65 feet, okay? And we're lower than RTH. And in this case, what's gonna happen is the drone is gonna move back first 50 feet and the reason it's moving back 50 feet is because it thinks that you went too far and then now it's trying to get the signal. So it's gonna move back 50 feet and then eventually if nothing happens, then it's going to go back to the altitude, to the RTH altitude and then come back in line like we saw before for uh, other stuff. So that's the fail safe RTH right here. 
uh, very useful, very useful if you lost the signal and it's gonna help you. If you have a failsafe RTH and you're further than 65 feet and you're higher than the RTH altitude, then what's gonna happen is the drone is also gonna move back 50 feet right here and then it's gonna go into its mode where it's gonna fly, maintain that altitude and then come back and then land right where you started from. Failsafe RTH, if you are within 65 feet, then what's gonna happen is that the drone is also gonna move back 50 feet and then it's gonna come back at that same altitude and just land. It's not gonna to go to the altitude, the RTH altitude. Now here's something cool. There is actually obstacle avoidance available during RTH. And there's obstacle avoidance during climbing and during forward movement. If during climbing, the front sensor or the rear sensor are sensing an obstacle, then the aircraft is gonna go backward or forward as necessary to avoid the object. Now this is kind of hard to picture, but let's say that uh, there's an object that's kind of pointy like this and you start climbing and it's, it's right here, okay? And you started to climb and it's starting to sense that there is something in front of it. Now remember, there's no sensor at the top. There's only a sensor in the front. It's gonna sense that there's something going on in the front. So what it's gonna do is gonna go back and then it's gonna keep climbing and see if it can keep that distance from that object. Now, if there's something on top that, and there's nothing else around it and you climb, then you're gonna hit it. Now, this is very unusual. Uh, unless there's a bridge right on top of it. So be careful when you fly under bridges, which is when this could actually kick in. So be careful with flying under bridges. I'm gonna say that again. Uh, but the obstacle clearance, if you're moving forward, is actually pretty cool. It's gonna go until it senses it. Now there's this bubble around the drone that senses forward and back and, uh, and senses the, uh, the objects and then it's gonna climb. It's gonna climb 15 feet and then try to go forward again. If there's still an object, then it's gonna keep climbing 15 feet until it comes back. Now the, the, the answer to the question, how high does it go? Does it keep going even if it goes higher than return to home altitude? I think the answer is yes, it's gonna keep climbing. I haven't been able to test this just yet, but my guess is that it's gonna keep climbing and climbing and climbing until uh, it's not an issue anymore. And then when it gets there, then it's basically going to land right on top of where you started, right, right at your home point. Okay, there are limitations that you need to be aware of with the obstacle clearance, obstacle avoidance uh, during return to home. First off, there is no avoidance on the side or at the top. I've mentioned this before a million times, but I'm going to say it again, because guess what? There's going to be people crashing their drones because they think there's a sensor on the side. Nothing happens if there's an obstacle sense from behind. What, the, what that means is if there's an object coming from behind or uh, to hit the drone, then nothing is gonna happen. Now this is unlikely to happen, but something that I should mention. If by chance you lose the, or by lack of chance I should say, you lose the GPS signal during return to home, then the aircraft is going to hover. And the reason it hovers is because it doesn't have really a signal to go somewhere. So instead of just going crazy, it's just gonna hover and hopefully you get GPS signal again soon and then it comes back. Obviously this one makes sense, but if the forward or the backward uh, sensing system doesn't work correctly, then there's gonna be no obstacle avoidance. And it makes sense. Also, you can manually control the speed of the aircraft during return to home. So if you wanna go faster, you can actually do that by using the control sticks that you would usually uh, use in here. If there is a geo zone during RTH, then the aircraft is going to descend until it gets out of the, RT, of the geo zone and then it's gonna come back. Or if it can't do that, then it's just gonna hover there until you figure it out. Now remember one thing here, very important, is the wind still has an effect on RTH. Even though, let's say that you went too far and you went too far because you had a good tailwind and then you're trying to come back and the drone is fighting on the way back because it doesn't have enough power. Even if you push RTH, you're still gonna reach the limit of the aircraft and it's not gonna help you get back. So you have to keep that in mind. Always, always keep track of your wind and don't go too far. 